have the first women bishop of ECI, Bishop Esther Katiroli, with us. Of course, we did not invite her in the morning program, thinking that she would have different engagement this day. So we targeted her to invite in the evening. Along with all our children on the campus, the, all the family members. So we invited her through Rebecca and our organizer, Dr. Prasina. And she has graciously accepted our invitation. So we heartily welcome you, Bishop Kadiroli. Before we welcome our traditional way, let me also take this time once again to welcome all the agricultural community, those who are physically here and those who are joining or witnessing online. So welcome you all to this function. Enjoy the program, whatever we could prepare, and then have a relaxing time this evening. Now, we would like to honor and welcome Bishop Katiroli in our traditional way, and I request Dr. Prasanna to honor her with all. So this is just beginning, Bishop. We will be after you any time we want. And also I take this pleasure, our former CSI Madras Diocese Bishop, Bishop Devasaheim is with us throughout the day. So I was sitting with him, talking with him. I was thinking in my mind, no, how young Bishop is still. From morning till the evening, he sustained. We arranged a room for him to take rest out there in room number nine, but I don't know how many minutes he took rest in the afternoon. He was right there in the multimedia. Then after finishing, I asked uh, him, you can take and rest at least half an hour in the room, but he was not taking rest. So once again, thank you, Bishop, and also we welcome you to this evening. Relax and enjoy with us. Thank you, welcome, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that warm welcome. As we begin this celebration, let us look to God in prayer. I request our chaplain, Reverend Dr. Wilson Paluri, to offer the opening prayer. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God of ages, we thank you for the church that you established all over the world. On this special day, we remember the reformers of the church, Martin Luther and Katharina von Bora, John Wesley, John Calvin, Zwingli, Margaret T. Navarre, Mary, Don Tyre, Argula von Grumbach, Olympia Morata, Jean de Al, Albert, and all those whose names and contributions are forgotten. We remember their sacrifices, wisdom, and theological articulations, which enable the church to stand as witness from generation to generation, pro proclaiming her faith in God the Liberator. We give you thanks for your love and faithfulness. We remember the churches all over the world, their leaders, bishops, presidents, moderators, pastors, and the congregation members. And we pray for your blessings upon them. 
God of communion, help us to be united in faith, love and service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir, for the prayer. Now sit, we will sit back and relax. Our dear little campus children are going to perform the welcome dance. So please see and enjoy it.
Thank you, dear children. It was stunning, amazing, and awesome. Very colorful. Can we give a big applause to them? Thank you to Ms. Kanimutu Selvi, Ms. Sophia, Ms. Elizabeth, and Ms. Christina for training these children to dance so superbly. Thank you so much. Let us all rise together and sing the congregational hymn the church is one foundation, the first two stanzas. And I request Ms. Kanimuthu to come to the stage and lead us. Can we please rise? Let us hear from the Bible, for which I request Reverend Lalji Veda to come and read for us the first scripture reading.
I'm sorry. Uh, now we have our campus students to perform a song, special song for us, and I request our students to come forward and sing the special song.
Thank you, student friends, for that beautiful, melodious, multilingual song. Now I call upon Reverend John Pradeep to come and read the scripture portion for us. For this Reformation Day celebrations, the scripture passage has been taken from Psalms 130. Psalms 130, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be rewarded. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Here ends the reading. Thank you, sir. We have beautiful butterflies in our campus, very colorful. Every time they sing, they are very colorful. So I request our beautiful butterflies and non-teaching staff to come forward and render a special song.
Wasn't it wonderful? Yes. Can we give a big applause for them? Because they have learned the song in German and they have sung the song in German. The English song is uh, A Mighty Fortress. And uh, so we really thank our beautiful administrative staff for learning the song and singing it so beautifully for us. Thank you so much. As we all know, we live in the context of pandemic and it's our responsibility and duty to pray. Now I request the following people to come, and come forward and pray for this pandemic situation. Now I call upon Dr. Samuel Sonjar Raj Singh, Reverend Lalji Veda sir, after that Reverend Dr. Edwin Jebaraj to come and pray. Let's pray. God the Creator, as we are continuing to struggle with the COVID-19 pandemic, help us to see the sacrament in the wearing of this cloth, the mask. Let it be an outward sign of an inward grace, a tangible and a visible way of living love for our neighbors as we love ourselves. Spirit of God, since our lips will be covered, uncover our hearts, that people would see our smiles, in the crangles around our eyes, since our voice may be muffled, help us to speak clearly, not only with our words, but with our actions. God of life, as the elastic touches our ears, Remind us to listen carefully and with full care to all those we meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and each breath that it holds be filled with your love towards resuscitation. In Jesus' name and in that love, we pray. Amen. Now we have come to the important uh, thing in our program. Today for our celebration, we have Right Reverend Kadirwali Manikam, Bishop, Evangelical Church of India, Chennai Diocese. She is a dynamic woman, a vibrant person, a great church woman leader who stands with the people. She has initiated many programs for empowerment and emancipation of women a friendly, loving, and caring person, a powerful speaker. Let us ask God to fill her with God's glory as she imparts God's word this evening. I welcome Bishop to share the word of God. Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' name. I consider it truly an honor and privilege and pleasure. Yeah? Should we? Okay.
Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' name. I truly consider it an honor, a privilege and pleasure to be able to share the word of God with you today. It has been such a wonderful privilege, really, and I give warm greetings on behalf of ECI Chennai Diocese to the beloved principal, the faculty members, non-teaching staff, and the beloved students. My special mention to Dr. Peter Singh, who's been a great source of encouragement to me. And of course, uh, Mrs. Rebecca, who gave the lovely introduction. She's a sister and a friend to me, and I thank God for her. And her children are like my children, and um, we've been uh, associated with each other for uh, more than two decades now, I think. And uh, I truly thank God for her. And. Um, when I walked in here, I saw Bishop uh, Deva Sagai Maya, and uh, just to see him among this August gathering is such a pleasure. And when the principal actually said uh, he doesn't know the secret for his youthfulness, I think I have cracked it. It's probably because he has a great sense of humor. And um, we had met in a couple of occasions, and uh, every time... Uh, uh, we talk with each other. Uh, he always has uh, so many jokes up his sleeves. And uh, recently, a couple of, uh, I think it was a week ago when I uh, met him in, um, uh, in one of our network launches, uh, this is what he told me. Uh, and it kind of uh, is just stuck with me. So I thought I will start uh, this uh, sermon with what he told me a few days ago. Uh, there was a bishops convention and uh, there are a lot of bishops there and there was a man who came there looking for a bishop who had a roaring laughter. So he went about asking uh, the people around, uh, where is the bishop who has that extraordinary roaring laughter? Where is he? And so all of them uh, looked at each other and said, uh, a bishop with laughter? Oh, he must be either a newly consecrated bishop or a retired bishop. Otherwise, you will have no bishops laughing around here. And I am a newly consecrated bishop and he's a retired bishop. And so I think that is the kind of uh, uh, jokes that we crack with each other. And uh, really seeing him uh, is a great pleasure. And I thank uh, God for him and his life and his ministry. My association with Gurukul uh, goes a very, very, very long way. I've uh, loitered around this campus when I was a small kid with my dad. It was in this campus that I learned cycling. And so... My association with Gurkhal is not in an academic sense, but, um, but really uh, I, I've come here for a couple of matches that we have played. And so just to be in this campus and uh, stand in front of you, it's an awesome privilege. But uh, the association with ECI and Gurukul goes a very, very long way. We have a very long history together. Uh, we have been privileged to, uh, most of our ECI uh, pastors have uh, had the pleasure of being or have been blessed uh, to do their higher education here. I wish I was one of them, but I think I missed the bus. But uh, I'm so glad that I could be here and, uh, you know, just to be among such elite people gives me immense pleasure. Uh, I was just asking uh, uh, Rebecca, um, how many minutes sh should I speak? And she said, um, probably 15 to 20 minutes. And I was, I'm a, I'm a preacher who can go on and on and on. And so for 15 to 20 minutes, uh, this is going to be quite a challenge, but I'm sure God will give me the grace to uh, pull this off. But before we go to the word of God, let's uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for bringing us together and listen to your word. Thank you, Lord, that you are seated on the throne and you have our cares and our concerns are in your hand, especially during this pandemic season. Lord, we know that the breath that we have in our nostrils and the life that we enjoy is from you. I especially thank you for Google and for all the wonderful people gathered here. Lord, the words that we meditate today, let it resonate with us and let it be uh, a word that stays with us forever, and this is for your glory. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. More than 500 years ago, the sound of a hammer striking the castle door in Wittenberg, it echoes for the next 150 years across the world 
as the Protestant Reformation. The reason why you are seated there and why I am here is because of one man who was so committed to the cause of reforming a system that has taken deep roots for more than thousands of years. I was just pondering about what kind of a great man he must be, what a courageous man Dr. Martin Luther King, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Martin Luther would have been, to really stand in front of uh, a, a hostile gathering and defend his 95 theses that he had nailed in the door. If Martin Luther was alive today, what are the things that he will want to reform and what is that that he is going to nail in the door of our hearts? I was just pondering over that and I, am, I have a question to ask all of you. Are we really reformed? Of course, we have come a long way, but still we have a very, very long way to go. There are so many things that have, uh, have really imprinted in our, in our society, in our churches. Our churches today are divided by caste, gender, and creed. If Dr. Martin Luther questioned the sale of indulgence, what are the practices that we indulge in our churches today? What are the practices that we tolerate? Don't you think it's time that we really have the spirit of the Lord that dwelled in Martin Luther resonate in each and every one of us? If there can be just one man who can make such an enormous change, what kind of a change that all of us together do in our churches, in our contemporary society? I would like to share with you what God has impressed upon my heart as to how Dr. Martin Luther responded when he was asked to retract his writings. Luther was placed on trial at the Diet of Worms. After putting up an elaborate defense in German, he was asked to repeat it in Latin. So after some hesitation, he decided to do so. The beautiful butterflies that Rebecca said, the non-teaching staff who sang that beautiful song in German, even if I did not understand a single word, I absolutely enjoyed it. So this is exactly what happened to him, you know. He had the elaborate speech made in German and after all that they said, why can't you just uh, repeat the whole thing again in Latin? And so here you have uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther who who repeated or uh, gave them a synopsis of what he said in German. So I'm just going to read this for you. Since your most serene majesty and your high mightiness require of me a simple, clear, and a direct answer, I will give one, and it is this. I cannot submit my faith either to the Pope or to the Council because it is clear as noonday that they have fallen into error and even into glaring inconsistency with themselves. If then I am not convinced by proof from Holy Scripture or by cogent reasons, if I am not satisfied by the very text I have cited and if my judgment is not in this way brought into subjection to God's word, I neither can nor will retract anything. For it cannot be either safe or honest for a Christian to speak against his conscience. Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. And this is what Dr. Martin Luther said in the Diet of Worms, standing in front of an absolute hostile gathering. Just think about it. Here, when I was invited, you give me a shawl. I'm happy to see all of you here. I'm excited to talk. This is a different scenario altogether. He is standing in front of Pope Leo X, the one he is taking on. And here you have uh, the Emperor of uh, Rome, Charles V, on the other side. And then you have uh, the, uh, the King of England, uh, Henry VIII, on the other hand. You have an absolute unbelievable scenario. And he had the courage. This courage was not from any human being. This courage came from the Lord. I just pray that each and every one of us here would have the same courage in our gut 
to stand for what God has asked us to stand for, not to dilute anything, not to just bend, but stand for him and for his glory. I would like to just impress upon you or bring to your attention five aspects of his defense, which holds good even today. It has resonated with me and it is relevant even today. The first part of it was, it is like he said, it's a simple, clear and direct answer. Wherever you are placed, whether it's a meeting or a conference or your, your own home or even a, a, a fellowship with an acquaintance or you're just talking to somebody, always make sure that your, whatever you speak is simple, clear and direct. That is how it should be. You do not sugarcoat, you do not beat around the bush, you just say, your, let your yes be yes and your no be no. That is not being arrogant, but it's just knowing that what has God given you, what God has placed in your hands, that you will stand for His glory and you will not go to the right or the left and you will stand for what you believe in. It should be a simple, clear and a direct answer. The Bible teaches us the power of life and death is in the human tongue. We can with our words, we can build somebody up or tear them down. The tongue has the ability to do that. And that is the only reason why God has guarded the tongue with 32 soldiers. Most of them white. Some of them may not be so white. And for some, we may not have 32 teeth. There will be less than that. But whatever it is, God has guarded us guarded our tongue, I believe in a baptism tank. So every time you open your mouth to say something, make sure you, have, you immense your tongue in this baptism tank that he has given us and make your words be an encouragement to others. That is the kind of person that we are called to be. When James talks about the human tongue and how vicious it could be, he says the small organ of our body can set our entire course on fire. It is like a small rudder in a ship that can change the course of your life. And so I truly, every one of you here, wherever you are, whatever circumstances that you are faced in, make sure that you guard your tongue. That will guard your life. I have seen so many people fall from grace by just using the tongue in a very vicious way. I encourage each and every one of you to remember what uh, Dr. Martin Luther said about how your speech should be simple, clear and direct. But it's not that easy to control our tongue, especially because we are all human beings. But as in Galatians uh, 2.20, as Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is I, it is no longer I, but Christ lives in me. And I really hope and pray that the resurrected Lord who is living in us, who is residing in us, will help us in whatever we do. And I truly believe that I am sure all of you here have gotten into some trouble sometime or the other. If you really think about it, it's probably because of what you said or what somebody else said. And so, as Martin Luther starts his defense, he is talking about how clear your speech should be. Next, he talks about do not put your trust in mortals. What he used to say is that I will not submit either to, uh, I cannot submit my faith either to the Pope or to the Council. I am not asking you to be in subordinate to your principal or anything like that. It's a completely different scenario. But what he is trying to tell you here is that do not put your trust in human beings. It's very easy for us to trust people. And uh, the Bible tells us, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. So I will encourage you to trust God in whatever endeavor that He has placed you in. There is no substitute for God. You cannot put anybody on a pedestal so high and finally tell them, I trusted you, but how could you betray me? It is your own making. So make sure that you trust God and all your crooked parts will be made straight by Him. We serve an awesome God. And so you have to learn to develop this relationship with God. The relationship that you have with God is such a unique thing. 
it's so important that you have to develop this history with god when you have your personal history with god you know it's so amazing that you understand that this trust that you have in god will resonate in not only you but in the people around you as well just a few days back my daughter was writing something uh, sitting on the dining table and there was a chair uh, right next to her so i just went to sit next to her and when i was going to sit she immediately said mummy don't sit there and i didn't know what was happening i just asked her why why should i not sit here i mean there's nobody here she said no jesus is sitting there and uh, when she said that you know as a mother it made me feel so good because i understand that at an early age she started developing this relationship with god the relationship i'm talking about the relationship that you had with christ right in the beginning when you were saved i really hope and pray that we will have this trust in lord no matter what you face the feet of the lord is the most safest place that you can abide and you always praise your trust in god and no mortal no matter what high portfolio they hold and your trust is with god and him only and then uh, martin luther the third thing that he says is be only bound by the word of god the word of god what is the word of god to you it is the living word of god it has life and it gives life it gives uh, it is to me uh, uh, it quenches your thirst and so this becomes your living water and as a food this becomes your manna this is the living bread that we talk about this is the word of god it is a sweeter than honey it is sharper than a two edged sword it is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path what is the word of god to you today when i started studying the word of god i did not study the word of god just to uh, uh, preach a sermon or to sound uh, more intelligent or anything like that i truly found hope here i found solace here i realized that this is the true living word of god and this helped me through the most toughest time of my life and so when i knew as the psalmist says if your law had not been my delight i would have perished in my affliction so when i knew what the word of god can do to me i started preaching the word of god to others so that it will help them too so this is the word of god that we confess and so this word should not be diluted this word should not be compromised this word should not be edited this is the living word of god and as dr martin luther says in his own words the bible is alive it speaks to me it has feet it runs after me it has hands it lays hold of me and so you have to be always grounded in the word of god this is where i found my purpose and my life depends on the word founded in the word of god and no matter what kind of a great theology and you are but if you can stray away from the word of god it cannot really be anything of any use to anybody so be rooted in the scriptures and fourthly this is what he said christian should never speak against their conscience we face so many situations so many compromising situations a changing society and that is reflected in our churches a changing church as well you and i are privileged to be born in this era but at the same time it has its own brick bats i truly believe that the divine voice of god is the conscience that we hear every day the still voice of god that tells you how many of you seated here feel guided have you ever felt guided that there is this voice guiding you something that says go there don't go there say this don't say this sit here don't be around here if you feel guided that is the voice of god and that should be your conscience but you know what happens when sin creeps in we kind of subdue our conscience we try to talk ourselves out of our own conscience and we try to play god ourselves be sensitive to the word of god i always think about the scenario uh, in uh, uh, in the bible where samuel is being called by god when he was a small child you and i have to understand that eli 
was there. He was in the temple when, he, uh, when uh, God called Samuel. But Eli could not hear the voice of God. A man who once heard the voice of God had somehow come to a place where his conscience is not talking to him anymore and he has subdued the voice of God. And so little boy Samuel could hear the voice of God, but Eli, who was in the same temple, could not hear it. But he could recognize and he told him, yeah, that should be the voice of God because I used to hear that before. So that is the thing. So never subdue the voice of God, which is your conscience. No matter what you face, do not go against your conscience. That is what Dr. Martin Luther said, that it is not, it's neither safe nor honest for a Christian to speak against your conscience. Never go against it. Just uh, around uh, six months ago, I had to face the same kind of scenario in my own life. Last year, uh, on the 5th of March 2020, a church of ours was demolished. It was one of the most difficult days of my life. When that church was literally tear down and when I saw the, the cross being demolished right in front of my eyes and this happened, we have a preacher in the making. Please give him a huge hound of applause. <laughs> yeah, so he's going to be a great preacher sometime. I truly believe that. And here I saw a church demolished right in front of my eyes. The cross broken. It was the worst day of my life. And just one year after that, I had a, an opportunity to meet the then chief minister to get an approval for a land that they have allotted for us. And that was a political scenario. When I had to go there, I knew what would happen. That was during the elections. And so uh, I knew all hell will break loose. I had a lot of things going through my mind. And then I just sat and listened to the still voice of God that told me, you are not going to do this just to go there uh, to please anybody, but this is for me. Do you want to play it safe or do you want to do what I want you to do? And so I just went there and I, maybe some of you know, there was a huge political drama that went around it. But even today, I truly believe that I listened to that voice of God that told me that I have to do something for his name's sake. And that is what I'm going to encourage you, no matter what others think about you, no matter what other, other people might uh, encourage you or discourage you, always be true to your own conscience. At least when you stand in front of the mirror, when you look at yourself, you have to tell, okay, I'm doing what is right by the Lord. And so never kill that still voice that is inside of you and that is the true conscience that is uh, God has placed inside of you and that is a sacred place that you have to hold holy you know there is a place inside of you that should not be corrupted a place where you meet the Lord and that is where you can hear his voice and finally he says take a stand and that is the way he took a stand with God's help and so when you take a stand here, there is nothing that is impossible with God. I truly believe that each and every one of you, who are, there have been hundreds and thousands of pastors who have come and gone in this uh, wonderful campus. God has resonated many theologians from here. And that is because you could take a stand. And so I truly believe that you can take a stand today. And God is going to really bless that. And he is looking at us right now. And the way that uh, this whole thing, you know, when Martin Luther, uh, he was being placed in a place where he could have very easily said, no, this is not my thing. And he could have uh, retracted. But here he was. He did not recant even when he was under enormous pressure. He would have even gone to the gallows for this. But he was even willing to risk his own life. And he took a stand. I truly believe that you and I are called here today because we worship a sovereign God, an omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient God. He knows everything. He knows what is happening in your life. So no matter where you are,
how you are placed always stand take a stand for the lord and that is what god expects for you and me when martin luther took the stand there must have been many people at the very same time who had the similar feelings as martin luther but nobody came forward to take the stand they were all people who were compromising but there was this one man whom we are commemorating today and that reformation has made you who you are made me who i am and so it is my prayer that god gives us the courage to accept with patience the things we cannot change courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference and i truly pray that god will help each and every one of you as uh, he helped martin luther to stand for a cause a worthy cause that is all united all of us here god bless us all thank you bishop for that meaningful and inspiring and powerful message on the reformation day through the life of martin luther hearing the word of god we have our students now to perform a mime for us uh, based on the theme of reformation i welcome frederick and the team to come forward and perform the mime However, since I am a man and not God, I cannot provide my writings with any other defense than that which my Lord Jesus Christ provided for his teaching. So through the mercy of God, I ask you imperial majesty and your illustrious lordship to defeat my writings with the writings of the prophets or by the gospels. for i shall be most ready if be better instructed to recant any error and i shall be the first in casting my writings into the fire i stand convicted by the scriptures to which i have appealed and my conscience is taken captive by the god's word i cannot and i will not recant anything for to act against our conscience is neither safe for us nor open to us on this i take my stand 
I can do no other. God help me. Amen. Thank you, friends, for that powerful and meaningful mime that you have rendered to us. Shall we once again give them a big hand? Now, shall we all rise up and sing the third and fourth stanza of the Church's One Foundation? I call upon Ms. Kanimudu Selvi and Dr. Aravind to come and lead us in singing. Come, come.
Please be seated. We have come to an, another important thing in the program, <clears throat> and it's a book release. <clears throat> and I request Reverend Babu C to come forward and release the book. <clears throat> I request Right Reverend Kadrali Manikam to please come and release the book. First of all, I thank God and all glory and honor to God alone for enabling the Gurukul Lutheran Theological College to bring another edition of Gurukul Daily Devotion 2022. Indeed, this is an auspicious time to say that this, this book was stopped or paused for a few years again as a mark of revival in the spirituality and enriching the churches and communities. The Gurukul daily devotion again revived. We live in a context with many challenges around us, threatening our individual, spiritual and corporate societal life. We live in a situation that challenges every Christian and human being to think and develop beyond one's own boundary to borderless creation so that to see everyone as my neighbor. Our spirituality should not just make us more spiritual and holy, rather enable us to become more disturbed and active participatory Christians in issues that we encounter in our present context. Our daily spiritual living should enlarge our theological perceptions and prepare the entire body of Christ to engage with the whole humanity and creation. Therefore, the Gurukul daily devotion is not just aimed at strengthening people of God spiritually, but motivate them to respond to the issues of children, women, farmers, ecological crisis, human rights, social justice, water issues, and also enriching spiritual and other impending issues. Therefore, the Gurukul faculty and the research scholars have written these devotions from theological, contextual, and praxis point of view. Gurukul devotion stands different from others because it is aimed at leading the whole people of God 
towards bold vision of theological spirituality. When these devotions are read, every reader should be like a theologian. They should be like an activist. They should be a real body and people of God in their own situations to respond. I am really thankful to all the contributors and especially my thanks to our beloved principal, Reverend Dr. Sangram Basmatari and our faculty uh, members and all the contributors. And my special thanks to our treasurer, Reverend Joshua Peter, who has been a great source of encouragement towards this book. I also thank all the individuals and churches so far that they have patronized this Gurukul daily devotion and they have been immensely benefited. And even when we released last year, we received so many comments, so many encouraging words from the churches and individuals and that propelled us to go ahead with another edition for the 2022. Today, on the occasion of the Reformation, this is my privilege to welcome Right Reverend uh, Dr. Right Reverend uh, Kadroli Manikam. Really, it is my privilege to see uh, Bishop here. 1998, she only just said, we don't know what will be uh, later. 1998, when I saw uh, Bishop was a young woman looking after the Golden Jubilee uh, a celebration of the ECI, and today here is a person with Bishop and uh, with a God's call to lead the church uh, ECI. And uh, I'm really privileged, uh, Bishop, uh, to have you here, and uh, I humbly request uh, this daily devotion to release for the glory of God and for the use of the body of Christ. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. A loving, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to your throne of grace yet again. Master, we serve an awesome God and thank you for especially the Gurukul daily devotion that is being released today. Thank you for this wonderful institution, Gurukul Lutheran Theological Seminary. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace that is upon each and every one of them here. I pray especially for Reverend Babuzi, who uh, has come up with this beautiful devotion. Let this resonate with each and every one of them. Anybody who reads it, let them be drawn closer to you. And we pray that we have more uh, people like him who get the divine wisdom and power from you to publish more books like this that will resonate with their readers. We thank you. And uh, in the name of our Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I release this book today. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Uh, friends, uh, the copies are on the way, and just in a few days we will get the copies. This is only for the release purpose. And uh, please uh, patronize the daily devotion and increase further uh, to publish like this many devotion future. Thank you very much, and thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Babu, sir. Shall we continue to pray for various requests? And I call upon the following members of our faculty to lead us in prayer. Reverend Dr. Boaz, Dr. Arvind J. Kumar, Reverend Dr. Vinod Silas, and Reverend Dr. David Joseph. Prayer. God of love, we pray for Gurugul Lutheran Theological College and Research Institute. We remember our foremothers and forefathers who have toiled to shape Gurugul with the bold theological vision to bring transformation 
in the church and society we pray that you may bestow on us the same spirit to continue the task of bringing transformation we pray for your blessings on the college as we train pastors evangelists and other servants in the vineyard of christ god we pray for the principal faculty staff and students and their families be with us as we are still struggling with the covid-19 contest with different challenges meet our needs give us wisdom to carry on our responsibilities with diligence amen let us continue to pray oh god the creator who creates and loves children we pray for children all over the world especially we remember girl children who are victims of rape and abuse god of compassion and justice we pray for children who are silently suffering the abuses and children at risk at various levels we ask for your guidance and pouring of your spirit on the churches and individuals to stand up as advocates on behalf of children amen god of newness grant that as members of your church help us remember the priesthood of all believers as we celebrate the reformation day may we continue to grow in the spirit and in the ministry that you gave us so that we may carry out our mission of service and love renew us by the spirit that we might be challenged to move beyond our apathy and our anxieties to serve the society in her needs amen god of creation we thank you for this lovely nature that you gave us to co-create to sustain and protect it give us that love towards nature help us to feel the presence of the spirit of god in the creation as we are celebrating reformation day we ask for your wisdom and love and power to reform our attitudes and thinking towards your creation and we have a beautiful children in our celebration in the morning when we had our endowment lectures we had our children had a small program where they learned new action songs played games and had competitions and in the competitions we to encourage them we had we have to give them prizes so now i request Reverend Right Reverend Bishop V Deva Sahayam to come to the stage and give the prizes to our children. We had three competitions and um, one of the competition was arranging the pictures of the five solas and you can see it displayed at the back of the hall our children have done it. and we had five groups and we have three prizes for that first prize second prize and third prize and the first prize the group which had done the arranging the pictures of the five solas the first prize group number 1 master elruva master alfred miss judith and master amish can you please come to the stage and get your prizes 
Can we give them a big applause? These children have done the five solas. Okay, thank you. The second prize goes to group number four, Miss Christina, Master Kenny, Master Vihan, uh, Miss Jeremiah, and Baby Johanna. Miss Christina. Third prize goes to group number three, Miss Angela, Miss Christabel, and Miss Elrina. Now I request Right Reverend Khadrali uh, Malikam to come and please give the prizes to our children. We had the second competition, the musical chair, and all our children participated in that, and we have three prizes for that. The first prize goes to Miss Judith. Second prize goes to Master Alfred. And the third prize goes to Master Amish. The third competition was a quiz competition and it was a thing that what the students taught them in the morning. We had two sessions and the first session, whatever they have heard and whatever they have learnt was asked as quiz to them. And in that, three people have got prize. The first prize goes to Miss Angela. The second prize goes to Master Amish. And the third prize goes to Master Alfred.
Thank you, Bishop, for giving the prizes to our children. As we have come to the end of our celebration, it is a time to say the closing prayer and let us pray. Our Heavenly Parent God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the Reformation Day celebration that we had here today. Thank you for all the programs that went throughout the day. Thank you for your presence throughout all the programs. Thank you for the speaker that we had today, Right Reverend Kadurali Manikam. Thank you for her ministry. Thank you for the inspiring message that we have heard through the life of Martin Luther. Help us to implement it in our lives. Lord, thank you for all the participants. Thank you for those who are participating online. Bless us together. Thank you once again for being with us throughout this time. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. I would like to request our dear Right Reverend Kadhrali Manikam to give the benediction. Let's receive the Lord's benediction. God, our Father and our Mother, bless you to be a blessing. Provide you to be a provider. God, our mother and our father, make one's own face shine upon you to bring shines on others' faces and be gracious unto you to be graceful. God, our mother and our father, lift up one's own endorsement upon you and give you peace so that you will be a peacemaker. Let us all sing the doxology together. Praise God from, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above we heavenly host. Praise heaven. Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you. Now I invite Reverend Dr. Nelavella Nyana Prasanna to give the vote of thanks. Friends, good evening once again. We thought we will be completing the program in one hour time. I think we took two hours. But, but no one is looking tired. It's a fantastic program. And my um, thanks to, first thanks goes to uh, Bishop Kadiroli Manikam. Thank you, ma'am, for that wonderful vibrant speech, very powerful, so powerful. And you have that, that, that voice, very strong voice. Thank you so much. And we have chosen the right person uh, for this evening. And, and the message, you said, Martin Luther's words you used, your words must be simple, clear, and direct. And that's what you did in your speech. Thank you so much for that. And of course, I just want to share one thing of Martin Luther. He was there enough. And of course, he brought uh, five solas, which we all know. And he also said one thing, sola experiential facet theologum in Latin, 
which means only experience makes theologians and our students uh, mind and they they made it very clear so along with his five solas faith alone grace alone christ alone glory glory to god alone and scripture alone i as dalit feminist the, uh, uh, lutheran theologian say experience alone and so many experiences have been brought by our students experience alone and sola spiritus the holy spirit alone will make us theologians thank you very much uh, dear bishop for that fantastic uh, speech and i want to um, thank uh, bishop deva you are still young and you you remind me of those days when i was doing bd and mth where we met in this hall number of times thank you for bringing those memories back we love you so much and i love you especially because my father's name is deva sahayam love you bishop thank you for being with us all through this day and for encouraging us and i want to thank um, uh, reverend joshua peter although he is not here our executive uh, secretary vlca for his constant support and his encouragement all the time and i thank our principal reverend dr songram basmutari sir i have to thank you very specially the day one i took um, uh, responsibility to uh, to be the convener for this program for this endowment and also for this reformation i never experienced even for a minute uh, an unpleasant feeling all through i really enjoyed and i i i enjoy uh, work with working with you thank you very much for that collegiality and i thank um, uh, ms rebecca sraya and reverend dr shanti sudha monica for their fantastic uh, leading of this uh, uh, this celebrations thank you so much and i also thank our chaplain reverend dr wilson paluri for leading us um, in prayers welcome dance fantastic it was really awesome beautiful we were all tired actually though we are not showing it on our faces from the morning we are sitting and doing lot of things all of us but your dance made us very happy thank you so much dear children of the campus and special song our gurukul students speaking in different tongues that oneness you know once my husband uh, when we got married uh, at that time when he did not he, he did not join uh, in church ministry so he went to one of the theological colleges there they asked him do you speak in tongues he said yes we speak in tongues and they asked him you please explain what it is and he said my wife speaks in telugu and i speak in uh, in tamil and together my children and the family we speak in english and things like that so we speak in tongues and you see this tongues that our uh, our, uh, our children our students have brought in and also our butterflies in german language how many tongues uh, the, the oneness of the holy spirit thank you so much for helping us to feel that oneness in spite of various different languages thank you so much and thank you reverend um, john pradeep for helping us in reading the scriptures and all those friends my colleagues who led us in prayers dr samuel sundar raj singh reverend uh, lalji veda dr edwin jabraj and um, uh, dr marvin marvin boas dr arvin jay kumar dr vinod sailors and dr uh, david joseph raj um thank you very much for helping us in leading uh, us in prayers and mine was awesome freddy and other friends you did excellent can we give all these people a one of a good applause once thank you very much and um i should not miss out anyone 
And I especially recognize uh, uh, Ms. Ranjita here, um, a, a women's desk or uh, uh, executive secretary, or I don't know, a women's desk secretary, uh, Ranjita from UELCI. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, Ranjita, here. And, um, and I thank uh, the photographers, uh, Kirti, and uh, those made this uh, room so beautiful. This hall is so lovely with all these flowers and all. Uh, Rebecca Madam and um, Jeban and all other friends. And um, thank you very much. And those children who took so much of pains uh, in teaching our children these dances and all, thank you very much. And uh, we will be having a lovely uh, dinner now, and um, and I thank um, um, Dr. Vinod and Dr. David, Reverend Logan, and all those involved in arranging uh, the food. Thank you very much, and um, uh, Rebecca, ma'am, uh, for other arrangements and uh, uh, for your coordination and and for everything. Thank you so much, um, and all those involved with this technical. Um, uh, support uh, Dr. Arvind and many other friends who are there. Thank you very much. I think I have mentioned all the names. Um, I hope I have not missed out anyone. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. If I have missed any name, I, I don't think I have missed. If, if I have missed Forgive me. And, and from this morning till this afternoon or evening, um, children programs have been organized by uh, Kannimuthu Selvi and uh, Matthew Franklin and other friends. And Rebecca Ma'am was there. Thank you so much. And all those children who involved in the morning uh, children programs and all those uh, who participated in competitions and everything. Thank you so much. And, and to all of us, let us thank once again and uh, let us uh, 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 give a big applause and finally we thank uh, uh, God for being with us. Thank you, all of you. You missed one thing, Dr. Prasanna. Thank you is not complete. We must thank Dr. Prasanna for leading the entire program. So thank you so much. <laughs>